Rasika, you can proceed now. Good morning, everyone. Welcome all for the industry institution development. This is the first time we are introducing here and we are receiving almost 500 plus uh, participants in all over the India and uh, from the Nigeria and Zimbabwe also. So it is very pleasure uh, to uh, having this particular function and this particular participants count. I, I hope so this uh, ID, I, IIDP program will be good more amount of benefitry to the industry people and at the same time the institutional faculty members and the students. The industry peoples, they may know about their uh, institutional capability and the institutional faculty members and the students, they may know about what questions actually the industries are required. Now, I'll give a small introduction about uh, uh, Dr. Srikant sir. Uh, Srikant sir, I have a um, connection with him for the uh, past one year. So, he was expert, he was actually well expert in ultrasound. He manufactured ultrasound probe, that is the most important thing. And all over South India, he's the main um, manufacturer for the ultrasound probe and he's the main sub dealer of uh, Sonare. Uh, so, this particular session will give you much details about uh, um, the ultrasound probes and also the expectations of the industries um, from the industries to the industry institutions. So, thanks a lot for accepting once again, sir. And uh, the session is yours now. You can uh, able to uh, uh, give your contribution to the society, sir. Thank you very much, sir. It's my pleasure. So let us start the program. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Your voice is audible, sir. Yeah, yes, madam. Yeah. Shall I start the session now? Yes, sir. You can proceed. Sir. Yeah. yeah. So actually, we are going to talk about uh, what is ultrasound and what is ultrasound probes and what are the problems we face with ultrasound probes and what are the solutions we can give to avoid those problems. So, let me first talk about what is ultrasound. Next slide, madam. 
See, uh, like ultrasound machine, I think everybody must be knowing, but I'll just give a small introduction about ultrasound machine. What does ultrasound machine do? There is an ultrasound probe which receives, transmits and receives ultrasound frequencies and it's been given to a CPU and from there it's been displayed in a screen. And there is a lot of other things like keyboard is available for uh, using the mouse and there is a disk storage for image storage. There are some processing units which are which comes under ultrasound machine. Now we are going to talk only about the ultrasound probe. Next slide, madam. See what is ultrasound probe? The ultrasound probe is also known as a transducer, or sometimes they call it piezoelectric crystal. It is a part of it is a part of ultrasound system that touches the patient body. Once the patient body is touched, you have to uh, like apply a gel, ultrasound gel, for easy transmission of echo waves. So once this crystal is kept on the patient's body, it will send some ultrasound waves and receives the sonic pulses. So it transforms one energy to the another energy, like a light bulb or TV antenna. This probe converts electricity into sound waves and vice versa, and then sends the data to the ultrasound machine for its process to display. So ultrasound transducer is the main thing which receives data from the human body. Next slide, madam. See, what is the ultrasound technology? Usually it is made up of mostly silica. Okay, so ultrasound probes vary. It varies with the frequency and types of probe. Usually everybody knows that ultrasound will the deeper parts will be scanned with a lower frequency for example 2.5 megahertz or 3 megahertz for superficial like carotid thyroid skin breast we need a high frequency that is 10 to 17 megahertz so basically there is a lot of other probes model also Madam, i think we can go to the next slide See, these are all different types of ultrasound probes, such as convex probe, there is a linear probe, transvaginal probe, phase array probe, and 3D and 4D probes. Before to this, there are two types of probes. One is mechanical, another one is electronic. Now, mechanical is almost ruled out. Only in 3D and 4D, mechanical probes are used. Regular probes, that is called sector probe, is no longer available with nobody else. All are moving towards electronic. This convex, linear, transvaginal, phase array, all comes under electronic probes. Next slide, madam. Okay, what is a convex transducer? Convex transducer will be in a convex shape and it will be used for all this application. Like, uh, for suppose if the patient is pregnant, they have to measure some parameters. First is BPD, that is biparatal diameter measurement in a fetus. And you can see the portal vein, kidney, spinal cord, any obstetric. So it is useful for renal, it is useful for obstetrics, it is useful for abdomen, and even sometimes for urology also, or bladder, if there is any stones in the kidney. So these probes are used. This convex probe will be using 2.5 to 3.5 megahertz. What is the use of 2.5 to 3.5? It needs a deeper penetration. So this probe will go deep into the organ. Next one, madam. This is a linear transducer. You can see the shape itself is linear. Where it's been used? It has been used mainly for parotid, thyroid, and for breast also. There is an appendix. You can use this for even tendon and for carotid artery, veins, um, digital artery, and even spinal cord. So this linear probe will be mostly high frequency because all these parts are superficial. For example, artery or appendix, spinal, all will be, will be very superficial to the skin. Next one, madam. This is actually phase array transducer. This is probably mainly for cardiology. So there will be two types of cardiology, pediatric cardiology and adult cardiology. This probe 
will be very useful for echo so they call us echo transmitter also sometimes here you can see the valves movement if there is any artifact if there is any problem with the heart how is the show calling how is the everything cardiac output you can get all this data so this probe is very important for cardiac application and this frequency will be one to four megahertz maximum suppose if you want to use for pediatric it may go up to six megahertz or eight megahertz also madam that, that particular slide madam yeah next one so this is actually micro convex transducer this probe is mainly useful for wet neck application or even for skull of the fetus some small newborn babies they will see the skull how is the skull portion so this probe will also have a frequency of 3.5 as well as 6.5 for wet neck application this probe is very useful so 6.5 is used for dogs and cats small animals for their abdomen and kidney because of the shape and the size it is very easy to scan a small object for example dogs or cat even the kids also this probe will be useful next one madam this is actually a volume convex probe see what is this combination what is a volume probe volume probe is nothing but a 4d probe so what is the difference between 2d 3d 4d usually 2d is single bed you know x-ray emission is there if you are going to expose your uh, uh, chest x-ray it's a single dimension if it is 2D means it's two dimension. 3D is actually a software through which they manipulate the image. But 4D is a real time. What it does is 4D Pro uses a combination of electronic and mechanical. There will be a small motor inside this which will move left and right like a wiper. And there will be an electronic probe which fires, which receives. You get a 4D image like this. And there is one more part. High definition. These are all software based. Next slide, madam. Similarly, there is a volume 4D TV transducer. What does it do? This is actually a small 4D probe with a small footprint. This also has the same mechanism of a 4D convex probe. But here the motor is very small because of this shape and size. It has to be small, and there is a small motor which this, the images will be like this. You can see the image on the right side. You can see follicles, multiple follicles are there. And even you can see the color follicles, you can see any fibroids, everything. Next one. Actually, this is the standard probe. For any probe, this will be the parts of a probe. First point is the acoustic membrane. What is the acoustic membrane? This only transmits ultrasound initially. This will keep over the body. After the gel has been applied to the body, this one will come into contact. That is the acoustic membrane or a transducer lens you call. So many would have seen ultrasound probe, the blue color layer will be there over the top. That is it. So second is a transducer housing. What is that, that housing means? There will be a small PCB as a multiplexing PCB or there will be some PCBs to soldering the crystal. And next comes a three is a transducer strain. See why the strain is there? Because the probe will be, we are using this probe this side, that side. So it should not spoil the probe's longevity. So they use a transducer strain. Fourth is a cable. This probe cable size will vary, either two meters or three meters. Two meters is regularly for our human, it is two meters. Sometimes for veterinary, they may need a three meters also. The length of the cable also matters. If it is more than three, even the impedance will get more, so the image quality will get down actually. Next is five connector strain. Like where you have strain on the edge side, even for the connector side, there is a strain. And six is a connector. There is a probe connector which connects to the machine. So when the machine is connected to the sixth part connector, ultrasound waves are transmitted through this one. There is one is there is a crystal inside. I will show the uh, like how the crystal will be later on slides. This one is very important to transmit out of some waves. Next one, madam. Okay. This is how it looks like. There will be acoustic lens. You can see that there is acoustic lens. There is acoustic matching layers. There is a piece of like ceramic is there. A signal electrodes is there. There is a grounding, proper grounding should be there. If not, noise will be generated in the ultrasound machine. I'm gone. In my opinion. <laughs> 
next slide madam see this is the exact part of a uh, ultrasound probe you can see there is a uh, there is two pcbs there is a connector here and there is a crystal so you can see the crystal there is a lot of pins there no that's a crystal and uh, these are all we actually buy these different different parts and we assemble it's not easy to assemble we have to solder either 80 cable 80 elements or 120 elements or 196 elements or even 65 elements sometimes so this work we do in our factory next one okay what are the tools required for servicing of this machine this first is a capacitor meter what is capacitor meter means this capacitor meter will give you the capacitance value of the crystal. So you should have a crystal each and every probe's configuration. So based on this capacitance meter, we can find out what is the capacitance value. So the capacitance value of every probe should be equal, almost plus or minus 5% or something. With the help of this capacitance meter, we can find how is the capacitance of the crystal. That will give you 99% the crystal is good or not. Next is multimeter. This is for checking the continuity between two cables. The soldering line is important, which has, should have a very small tip and uh, which should have a fast heating capacity. What is it? the earthing sheets? These sheets are important. Once the crystal is uh, finished, soldering is over, we have to put a proper grounding. With this uh, earthing sheets and proper shield, we totally close the probe. So there shouldn't be any noise which comes from this probe. It will it, have an impact on the ultrasound we made. So we need some double set tapes and sealant for closing the crystal with the case, and gloves for our own thing. And some machine will have a softer also. See, you you know, connector will be similar. But the probe head will be different. So machine should sense which probe we are connecting, for which there is a softer, which is there at the connector side. We need some nose players, tweezers, and thought and spirit, etc. Next one. Next slide, madam. Okay, see what are the problems we face in India because of the ultrasound transmission. There will be holes, cuts, swelling in acoustic lens, membrane, damaged hydraulic crystals. So what 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 type of cuts? Sometimes you know rats may cut. Sometimes over the membrane, the acoustic lenses, you know, even cockroach will bite it. That will also have an impact. That will Damage the crystal also, and there will be some damage in the piezoelectric crystal. Any cracks on the transmitter housing is because of long use or somebody drops the probe also, there will be cracks on the transmitter. And the relief strain sometimes comes out, so at that time the cable will lose. So image will sometimes will come, sometimes it may not come. So you have to see the strain relief also. And sometimes the cables are even cut. I have seen in many veterinary or even what happened in the human also. The probe is there, there will be cable which comes to the probe, to the connector, sorry. And then sometimes with the use of the trolley, we will get around the cable. So cable has a I mean, possibility of getting damaged. And sometimes with the use of veterinary, you know, dogs, they just put the, they will close the mouth. Once it is open, it will cut the cable. And there is a swelling of the matching layer also. There is a pin damage in the machine side connector because of the wrong connectivity. But if they, use, they put it in opposite direction and they'll try to screw in, it may not go. Then again, they put in the right direction. At the time, there will be some winds may be damaged. So these are all common problems what we face in our Indian conditions. Next one. Okay, what is this probe membrane replacement? Usually what happens, this probe membrane, the top, that is lens, ultrasound will not pass through uh, air. So that is the main problem with ultrasound. You will not pass through. Rise, rise. I don't need to finish. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So what happens? Sometimes, you know, uh, unless, uh, there is a probe membrane uh, gets damaged. What is the cause of damage? There is a layer over the Crystal. There is a there is a layer over the probe. What happens sometimes the ultrasound will not pass through air. So this air will become a band. You will see as though there is a crystal failure, there will be a band. 
What is the cause of this particular air gap? Even the heating of the probe, the probe is being used, it's not used in an AC room. There is a possibility and even the high voltage which comes through the connector to the probe, that may be more. So that may damage the lens. So if the lens has a damage, it's slightly very bulge in shape. So ultrasound will not pass with that. So you will have a problem. On the left other end, there is a swelling, a dislocation, a lens thickness due to improper repair, uh, air gaps, uh, bubbles, uh, some scratches are there. All these are some reasons for poor membrane replacement. Next slide, Madam. See, this is how it looks like. See, you can see a small hole on the probe that is before putting any layer. And uh, you can see the top side, there is a gap. So, ultrasound will not pass through that, and there will be some uh, like hair gap always. So, it looks like as a crystal has failed. And then we have to put a layer over this. After putting oh. layer, it will be 100% okay. You can see the images of both. Next one, madam. See, this is also one type of membrane. The lens has come out. So after putting layer, see, these are some examples. You can go to next slide, madam. You can see there are two photos. One is a linear, one is a convex. And over that, you can see that membrane is damaged. Sometimes what happens, they give to some guys who doesn't know what is the meaning of membrane they put a thing on they put some layer paste and they put, put very quick and it get damaged okay. so you have to give the right person who knows this work if not you will have a problem and this membrane also has some what is a quality to be used so it has to pass through our I mean, human body and let us come if there, there is some value for that also so those things have to be taken into consideration before giving for a service Next one, madam. So you can see here, lens issue, there is air gap, you can see. There is crystal field, first photo, no? you can see two dark bands are there. So what is the issue with that? The crystal failure is there. And this next image also, you can see, there is also some black thing. This is air gap. If there is a crystal failure, it will come from the top. If there is an air gap, the top thing, second photo is air gap, first photo is Typically, crystal failure. If there is a air gap, then only you can put the layer. But in this first case, you have to change the crystal. Next photo, madam. Next. Next. See, what is the end crystal replacement? So, this is what I told. There will be, you can see, damage in the probe. Crystal is probably caused by dropping the probe or hitting the probe against object or usual wear and tear. See, wear and tear is the main reason and also sometimes voltage also. Ultimate consequence would be to drop out an image. There is a black lines, loss of the pattern waves. At that, at that place, no, you do not see any scan image. You may have, you may miss some observations when you use the same probe for scanning. Here, there are some you can see. Since the crystal would be in a weak or dead state in receiving and sending the ultrasound waves, in such instance, replacing damaged crystal can avoid patient misdiagnosis. Next one. You can go one step further. I mean, before this is the slide, madam. Early slide. Can you go early slides? Early slides. In the community. Yeah. Next one, madam. No, no. Kira, kira, down, 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 down. Next one. Next one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here you can see there is a translucent issue scanning images. First thing, there's a dark, you can see there are four images. All the images, problem with the picture. There's a drop, you can see. First image, second, third, fourth. So these are some examples of failures, how the image is going down. Thank you.
డ్యామేజ్ <laughs> next slide madam adrishya tarsa na ka edu ka ka undare ma ah edu undare ma ma'am question enade ya per copycan ya per porad ma copycan potutanga ma'am the hostel message ma'am ayirukanga ma'am seri seri edu cartland kadu ma ayyo ayyo slide madam ma'am any kind kindly make it mute please sorry for something now please don't disturb next slide madam see what is the this next problem is cracks on the transducer housing the cracks on the transducer housing assembly are caused mostly to the they drop the probe and forcibly damage the attached outlet see what happens they keep the probe over sides no when they move the trolley the probe will go hit the wall that is one or even the patient sometimes when they get up on the bed they that's all of the probe and they get so these are all physical damages are happening in the probes which has to be taken into consideration by the scan doctor itself another defect that arises in transfer housing is the housing gap what happens there is a small gap which comes due to that well will will go into that thing and that is spoil the pcb which is there which may short circuit and the crystal may fail so cracks on the transducer housing also should be taken into serious consideration sometimes they will put some what is it some tape and they start scanning and they using it will be fine but over some time jelly you know will slowly enter into the probe through the gap and it will go and spoil your crystal so if there is any air gap or if there is any gap you see in the transducer housing please make sure you take this very serious and do it immediately so you can like oh by spending some 3000 rupees you can avoid big cost of a transducer of around 1.5 to 2 lakhs next slide madam it's not audible hello it's not audible we can't hear you clearly is that so are you able to hear now audible sir audible no problem audible right okay madam yes sir yes sir See, the voice uh, is little low okay and i am actually in office only please let please check me see your side sir voice is very clear sir voice is very clear louder also i am also participant sir voice is louder no now i got 100 percent madam i think i think now it will be good sir, for you sir, clear sir clear okay see what happens here you can see Uh, ultrasound transducer like how is in crack the first point you can see you know there is a crack and we have taken off the crack and we we replace this particular top layer alone and the finish will be like the third image what you see so it's better to replace or even put some sealant and close the gap so that gel will not enter into the transducer next photo camera hello welcome <laughs> here also you can see there is a crack there there is a blue point no? there is a crack in the probe so after layering we also put this particular putty and paint so that it the further damage will not be happening for this particular probe this is a linear probe of g10l next one madam next slide madam okay here that i am talking about strain relief condition on both ends see you i have shown you there is a strain relief connector side as well as on the head side what happens here strain relief is a point where the cable and ultrasound probe is connected sometimes the crack strain relief or relief separation of both ends due to mr lucy many times i have seen 
there will be a, I mean, uh, what, what they do uh, with the relief strain after that, there will be soldering. So if there is a loose, whenever doctor scans, there is a possibility that cables will come out one by one. The 120 elements or 80 elements which are soldered, the 80 wires are being soldered. One by one, if it comes, you will start losing some black black patterns will come on the scan and that crystal will not fire because there is no voltage for that. So this particular strain relief has to be intact or at least for the time being, you have to put some tape so that will not move. Actually, such strain relief condition on both ends can lead to a noise problem. There is a noise problem also that will happen and the transducer probe can resolve the loose strain relief connections. We have to immediately look into this so that minimum damage will be there initially. If there is a big issue, it will be short also. Next point, madam. Next slide. See, here there is a, what are the problems you can have with a cable. Usually because of wear and tear, cable will get hot. Defective cable generally include inflexibility of the transducer cable, broken cables, strain release issue. In rare cases, damage can damage cable can cause electrification in the patient also. There will be shock in the patient if there is any wire has been damaged because it gets around 110 to 120 volts every time. Each, every crystal will get 120 volts. So there is a prob probability of getting shock for the patient. As a result, prominent cable issue if it reflects on the image, the image, noise also will come, artifacts will come, and color, suppose when you put color in the color doppler, there will be color artifacts of the image. This is the reason. The problem causes of the different cables are system will run over the cable, improper storage of the cable. So usually I have seen in see, biomedical uh, engineers' main work is to see put the ECG cable, you have to keep the cables in a proper way. Then you have to put it in a and there will be two notches you have to properly. I guess even the ultrasound probes, you can see uh, there will be a lot of probe angles in the machine. It has to be routed properly so that these problems will not happen. And you should instruct the scan doctor or the scan user how to keep these probes without any problem. I have seen in many cases, they just put them, they scan and keep it and go. And then when they move this, it will move around the cable and it will damage. And also the cable, once the scanning is over, they have to clean the thing with a soft type of any, even a tissue paper or any cotton. If not, if the gel is kept on there, a rat will come and eat the gel and it will spoil the, it, like unknowingly, it will also spoil the, the top membrane. So, you should be very, very careful and we should properly instruct the doctors to use this. If there is any cap, uh, cable damage, what is the cause? See, what is the solution for that? If the cable is cut near to the connector, you have to cut that and solve it to the connector. If the cable is cut at the crystal end, we can cut and we can do the crystal thing. But if the cable is cut in the center, you have to buy a new cable and you have to work both on the connector side as well as on the crystal side. But it is a very tedious process because we have to solder one to two wires at the top, one to two wires at the down. And you have to correctly check which is the connectivity, which is the continuity, which pin number refers to which. It's a big process, but we can do that. Next slide. Man. You can see this. What happens, there is a before, this is actually Philips Pro. You see at the top near the strain, at the crystal side, there is a cut. And we have cut that, we have solved it again. You can see after cutting, now after everything is solved, probe will look like a new probe. And we sometimes paint also. Next one. So what happens, sometimes cable issue, you can see them scan images. If you move the cable, sometimes there will be noise like first image, and there will be noise like in the color image I've shown. And even sometimes, like even there, there will be black shadows also. It will show as though crystal has failed also. Next point. Next slide, madam. You can see these are all some cable issues. You can see the first one. Third, all these three are 
cable issue these are all some typical cable issues first probe is nalla veniyala indha kadhu variya ullu third is mind right all the probes there is a problem sorry, with the sir sir give me one minute time sir i i will i will put limit for all the participants and then we can proceed sir please sir what happened sir somebody is keep on talking sir i will i, I will okay. ask directly them okay. to make a mute okay sir okay sir please okay sir please Can we get the recording of this meeting? Sure. I will give the presentation. Yes, sir, you you can proceed, sir. Wait a minute, sir. We will share the screen. please now you can proceed sir please yes sir yes sir yes sir yeah thanks sir okay here here comes the swelling of matching layers and the gel issue okay what can this gel can cause a problem i'll tell you now swelling of the matching layer can be caused because of improper gel and wrong sterilizing method on the lens so what happens many doctors they keep it on some uh, ot room and the probes are being sterilized so you have to use a proper cleaning gel or agent so it will not it should not destroy the matching layer matching layer is just a Uh, it's a rubber layer so it may interact with the it may interact with the uh, gel and gel and this will spoil the total probe and also damage matching layer leads to shadow or dropouts of image a timely probe repair at the early detection stage can rectify such failures in alignment with the gel issue immersing the ultrasound probe in more than accepted or recommended levels of gel as per user manual damages the matching layer transfer replacement lens replacement works better i will also tell one more thing if there is a small gap with the top layer so there is a possibility patient uh, when they are scanning for a patient they put a gel and they will start scanning over a period the gel is a small little will enter into the thing and it will go down go down and there is a pcb the pcb will get spoiled and it may spoil the crystal so we have to take care of both when you go to start like in the user manual there will be certain uh, things which they say you have to use this particular thing you have to use this particular thing only so that alone you have to use it for cleaning the top layer and also probe even the fumigation also you should be very careful next next slide sir next slide please yeah you can see here there is a probe swelling of matching layer and gel all the four are having some issues you can see these all these three four crystal has been this is a green there is a there is a you can see the layer has been peeled off that is the matching layer below that there is you can see some greenish colors have come so this has spoiled the crystal already in this case we have to replace the crystal only 
So these are all final states. If we initially find out there is an issue, we can only write change the membrane, we can, we can sort out the issue. So the slide has more, slide has more. Come down, sir, come down. Little, little. Next one. Next one, next one, next one, next one. Next one, yeah. Early one, like early one, sir, early one. Earlier. Yeah, so you can see in all these four, the first layer, we can see the membrane is likely we have peeled off and we are showing image. So that is a matching layer inside that because of jelly entering, it has spoiled the crystal. Here you can see even there is a breakout of second image. You can see there is a breakage of crystal itself. In the under it's a crystal figure. If you reverse the lens also, nothing will happen. So every time if a doctor says some problem is there with the probe, you should be double sure whether this has got a, a like air gap or any damage. You can see physical damage. These are all physical damages. Next slide, sir. Sir, next slide, please. Yeah, so you can see all this jelly has entered. And look at them. This is totally damaged. Both the cases. So here, trans is a replacement. We have to change only the crystal in both the cases. Next slide, sir. Next slide, sir. Okay. This is what I told. System connector issues. Usually, there is a procedure we have to connect in one direction. This connector will go in only one direction. Sometimes if doctor is not there, some staff nurse will come or they will operate the machine. Instead, see some machines will have four probe connector. Some machine will have three probe or two probe or single probe. Suppose there is single probe connector. Every time doctor has to remove and connect a new probe. If suppose the doctor is using a convex probe, if there is a requirement for a linear probe, they are going to connect it. If they put it in a wrong direction and they try to put it in, this particular pins will be damaged. So you have to be double sure what direction you're putting it. See, in one direction only it will go. It will not go in both the direction. And there is also a pin mark. And you can see there is a lever. There is a small pin so that marks the direction. So we should be very careful that we have to put the in the right slot and in the right direction. If not, there is a possibility of system connector getting damaged. Next one, madam. Okay, what is multiplexing? Hello, sir. Please, one minute, sir. Please, sir. Yes, yes, madam. Yeah. What is multiplexing? See, usually what happens, there are some crystals like 64 elements are being used for cardiac probes. The 80 elements are used for black and white probes. 120 elements are used for colored up probes. So here, what happens, many places, there is a multiplexing. If there is going to be 192 elements, so the 192 element, they multiplex and they get. If there is any problem with the multiplexing board, so their images will not be proper. It will be like a double image, or there will be a, something like a, um, okay, some uh, ghost image sort of thing will come. So this multiplexing, which comes in the connect with a crystal side, has to be taken care. Philips has got multiplexing, and now even mind ray probes, which are all 196 elements, they have a multiplexing boards. Next one, madam. See, this is a typical example. This is a multiplexer. You can see there is a multiplex in ICs. What happens sometimes if one wire will give eight signals or two will give 16, something like that they will have programmed and this will be 
instead of soldering all the wires, one wire will be equal to eight. So this will give more uh, image quality and the time for soldering also will be less. Next one. Right? This is the typical 3D 4D Pro. So what happens here? There is a connector, cable, and there is a strain relief in both the direction, both the sides, as usual. And there is a 4D. You can see the top. There is a probe casing is there, oil refilling or sealing is there, and probe cap is there. So here there will be oil because this has got a rotary motion. So if the motor runs for long, it gets heated up. So they have a oil also. Here the combination is something like a mechanical and electronic board. Both together will work in this. Next slide. Okay, what are the like defects we can do? If there is any oil, see what happens. If there is a less oil, the image will not be good. If oil may have got dropped or come out of the probe, the level has decreased. At that time, image may not be clear. And there is a leak. It's like an oil leak, we have to prove that. If there is any dome, there is a if there is a dome in a dome, there will be some cut or cut will be there. So we have to take care of that also. And some error corrections, or even sometimes there is an issue with the uh, software, and there is a problem with the motor also, and even there is a problem with crystal or something. We can do all these type of defects for a convex or a TV probe. Next slide. See what happened here. Pro oil leakage is the most common problem we found in 3 and 40 transmission. Pro, pro leakage can be evident that oil in the probe soft and shift when turning the probe downward, facing and turning it up swiftly. As an effect, the image appears to be wavy or black. The black means the image quality is less. Then it is a time to repair or refill the oil, which is a big process because after replacing the oil, we have to also calibrate the motor and we have to calibrate the resolve work fine. Next slide. These are all some parts of it. This first image shows it was cut and there is a motor inside which has fallen down. So the image will be like this. So before you can see both the images. The first is the physical image of the probe. Second is the image. After putting on this properly and putting the oil in the image after this clear. Next one. Here also, see, uh, there is a 3D. 3D image means it's a diamond. 3D is a, usually a software program. So with the help of a 2D image, you're transferred to 3D images. Here you can see there is a cut in the crystal side, or sorry, yet side, and we have repaired it. Next slide, more. <coughs> This is what uh, to replace the dome. This is a 4D Pro Convex. So we see the top dome. Next slide. And these are the images where what you have done. Okay. So let us see. Uh, like how to identify the repair of probe. We are not sitting in Chennai. Some customer may call in Delhi. So you should first ask the doctor to send the image, scan image, and and also physical photo of the probe this is the first thing. Some machine what they have in Delhi may not be available in Chennai. So you have to first diagnose. You can see 50% of the problem we can see whether when they share the image itself. Always get a scan image of the defective probe from the customer. To access the probe condition at first safety. Initially we will find out what is the problem. Whether there is a air cap or whether there is any cable cut. All those things you can see in physically. So then, once the probe comes to you, check the capacitance value of the probe. As I told you earlier, this will give 99% or 95% whether the crystal is good or not. So there may be a problem with the crystal or the cable or the connector. So these three things we can easily find out by using the capacitance meter. Physically check if there is any crystal damage. As I told you, there is 60 per 80 96, 120, 192. First of all, you have to find out which 
probe belongs to them, which is how many crystals that particular probe has. And if you have a pin map of each, see every company, for example, G, Philips, Aloka, Toshiba, Mindray, Sonoscape, whatever you name, all the probes will be different. They have their own set of probes. Even though some machines you know, are same or they're OEM, that may be almost same. But different, different manufacturers, they will have different configuration of the probes. So that is the reason, for example, a customer using a G machine, you cannot put a binary probe with them. If the customer using G, or we cannot use the Toshiba probe. Every probe will have different types of pin configuration, as well as number of elements, so many things. So they have their own set of probes. So you should have a pin map to identify what is the problem, and whether capacitance is fine. And also physically check if there is any air gap on the layer when with a coin test. What is a coin test? You have to apply jelly over the probe and take a coin and just move the coin from left to right. And you can see in the scan image there will be a scan pattern. Any, anyone can go and try in your hospital or in wherever you go, you can check that. So that coin test also will reveal if there is any crystal failure or any crystal dropout. If the crystal is the issue, then replace it in a suitable model. And also sometimes there will be see there is one two-digit element. Many what they do, they solder even and odd. Odd will be different, even will be different. So we have to separate odd and even, then you can configure it easily. And also, if you are using the old cable for new crystal, cut the probe five centimeters below the crystal yet. Usually wear and tear is there only. Talk to when the scan that will have more pressure. It's better to cut the five centimeters and solder. So take the sleeve. And in the wire itself, there will be two. One is signal, another one is ground. So separately you have to do all these the pins has to be soldered quickly, and you have to use a relief strain and put cover over and cable now itself. If possible, take odd and even pins separately for easy soldering. So because every time you have to from one to one, so one down will be easy. So separate that and you can use it. Next slide, madam. So now how to identify the probe repair and solution? Use the supply, PCB supply the supply for soldering. After soldering complete, check the capacitance of the probe. See, once soldering is done, we have to check the capacitance. If all the crystals are okay, we have to do proper grounding of the probe, the edge side as well as the connector side. And ground copper sheet, crystal common ground. There will be common ground which has to be taken into consideration and has to ground it properly. Then close the case with sealant and let it dry. Before closing the probe, completely check orientation. See, there is left and right orientation. If you scan from left to right, image should come left to right. It should not be vice versa. That has to be taken care. Many doctors will say orientation is wrong. So we have to consider that also. So, the probes will have software. So please check the software version model before sending the probe to the customer. Next. So these are some sample images, artifacts and image, color artifacts are there, noise and image. But these will you have to like, avoid all this after replacing the new crystal. And of the proper grounding also is required to avoid all these issues. Next one. So what are the preventive measures you can take? Involve in regular inspection of the ultrasound transits and its parts. Clean the probe using the proper cleaning gel as per specific instruction before natural use. Necessary to keep the transducer cable off the floor. Keep the probes away from direct sunlight or excessive temperature changes or pressure. Make full utilization of the sterile probe covers when it is not in use. And many a times I have seen we have to clean the gel after scanning. That is very, very important. If they leave you, if they leave just like that, I have seen many cases that may bite the probe. See, to be honest with you, 90% of the ultrasound mission problems are with the probes only. Only the 10% problem with the power supply or the software or the mission itself. So, if you keep these probes in a very good condition, failure will not happen at all. For that, once the scanning is over, you have to come and the cables have to be routed properly. As I told, you cannot keep on the floor. If you follow this procedure, life of the probe also will be more. And if there is any small issue, 
immediately call engineer and find out. If not, you will have to pay more in future. Next slide, please. Here also the cleaning and disinfecting of the probes. Where processing productive kits while disinfecting cleaning the algorithm probes, find the probe algorithm, we have to clean it. We clean or wash the probe of the organic material so that blood will be there, body fluid will be there, residual sterile gel will be there. This is purified water with single use sponge. We advise them not to use a brush as it damages the transfusion. Wipe gently the wipes containing isopropyl alcohol IPA 70%. Remove all the remaining organic matters. Try the transfer surface using clean soft cloth out of the house. Since ultras does have heat sensitive, avoid using heat to dry the probes. Dry the probes completely before storing them in order to avoid appropriate growth. Confirm that the transfer shows no signs of deformation, damage, or aging. Next one. Next slide, Madam. See, actually, uh, I have very small things to clear. But see, there are a lot of videos I cannot share here. But, uh, this is my number. If you have any doubts, you can call me. I can share some videos also. I really thank Mr. Sinapurni sir for giving me this opportunity. If any questions, you can ask me, please. No, I am the correct. Hello, sir. If any questions, please ask me. Sir, I am audible. Hello. Sir, you are audible. Sir. But, uh, if you have any doubts, if you have any questions, please ask me. I'll be able to clarify. I have given a mobile number also here. If you have any problem with transcription, you can get my suggestions. This is my WhatsApp number also. Anything related to ultrasound probes, we can support you. No questions? Sir, thank you very much. This is Pandian. again I will show also this situation will be uh, very useful for you and uh, thank you once again uh, dr srikan sir and all the other uh, faculty members and the students of engineering colleges and uh, as like us today tomorrow we have one more session um, mr uh, partha saradi sir will come and give you the clarity about the industry so thank you all the participants and thanks a lot and uh, thank you srikan sir once again thanks a lot it's my pleasure, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. It has a it has been such an honor to be a part of this wonderful event. On the behalf of Athena Panian Private Limiter, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our honorable chief guest, Mr. Dr. Srikant, sir. Thank you, sir. And my sincere thanks to our CEO, Dr. S. Athena Panian, sir, who supports the event. And a wide round of applause to our director and our uh, head of operations and our international operation head, and my heartfelt thanks to all our participants who made the event a memorable one. Finally, I would like to thank to all your presence here for making the time to be with us today and helping us make this event as a grand success. Thank you one and all.